What's up, people? It's your boy. And in here is our little prickly gecko, Sheila. Even though Sheila has not been bred, nor does she have a mate, Sheila laid some eggs. And we're gonna talk about what we're gonna do with those eggs and how that's even possible in today's video. So stick around. First things first is we have to find this little lady because she is very tiny. So I'm probably just gonna pull this out. Leroy is making a whole lot of noise up there. Should we let Leroy walk around? Maybe. Leroy was making a lot of noise, so he's gonna walk around and pace the room while we get this done here. As I was saying, the first thing I'm gonna pull out of here is what was supposed to be her lay box. She's kept on primarily play sand with a little bit of eco earth mixed in there. But in this cup, we put just eco earth so we could keep it just a little damp so that she could dig a little burrow for her eggs, but she didn't wanna do that. She wanted to dig holes all throughout the sand and hide her eggs Easter bunny style. This thing actually kind of worked out. She uses it as a toilet, as you can see here. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna clean that up when we get done filming here, but uh, yep, no Sheila in there, no eggs in there either. I looked anyway, promise. Now we gotta find the little rascal. Found her. Oh, being as small as she is, she is quite quick as well. And she's just so small, presumably uh, fragile as well. I haven't really tested that theory, but she's so small. I really don't like to grab at her. I like to scoop the sand like that there. So now I got some dirty fingers, but hey, here she is. Quick little intro on Sheila here. This is a prickly gecko or a binose gecko. And they're native to Australia, but really no specific habitat. You can find these guys running around the desert. You can find them running around urban areas like cities and things like that. They're just all over the place because they're so tiny, you know? Don't eat me. But another reason that there are so darn many of them and they're all over the place is because Needing two animals to reproduce and carry on your species is lame, okay? And that's what the prickly gecko says. They don't need that. They're all female, and they produce their offspring through a process called parthenogenesis. And through parthenogenesis, she was able to cook these little eggies all by herself. Now, they're not perfect clones of the parents, the offspring that come out. There is still some genetic variation in the species, which is just really interesting too, even though they only have their mom's DNA. But really cool to see. So like I said, Sheila laid some eggs, okay? She laid her first clutch a little while back now, and uh, we did not find them and put get them into the incubator. So unfortunately, I actually don't think that those eggs are going to hatch. But in the past week or so, Sheila has been looking really big, so we knew that she would lay another clutch. They can lay up to four clutches a year, so we may even have more eggs on the way. But while I was pulling her latest clutch of eggs, actually, I found... I really don't think it was my fault. I was being pretty gentle, right? Her egg might have just been not all the way calcified or something like that, and it kind of cracked, right? So we only have one egg that we're pretty dang sure is viable because like I said, those other two were neglected in the incubation process, so to speak. But all three of the eggs are in the incubator. So, I mean, if those other two eggs still stand a chance, they'll hatch out when they hatch out. Other than that, in about 60 days, we'll, we're expecting Sheila's daughter, okay? We're incubating the eggs at about 80 degrees, which is what the species calls for. So in about two months time, Sheila's gonna have a little sister daughter. Ideally, I'll keep Sheila's first three babies, I would say, and then raise them up. I am going to raise them up uh, separate from her in her adult form here. And I've heard that it's totally fine to even raise the babies up with the with the moms. Yes, I was going to say parents. But. but the thing is, I just don't want to risk it because Sheila has the best feeding response in the entire room. She's always ready to chow down. She's an insectivore, so things like real small crickets, real small doobie roaches, mealworms... Anything that's an insect that's pretty tiny, these guys will gobble them up. So I don't want to risk leaving the babies in there and if she's just having an off night and not paying too much attention and one scurrying across the ground, she just brutally murders it. I don't know if it would happen, but I'm not going to take those chances. But when they get to about uh, just past juvenile into like sub-adulthood, I'll put them together and everything should be fine. That way in about a year and a half, whenever those other girls reach their uh, reproduction maturity, we're gonna be like a little prickly gecko factory over here, okay? 
So in about two weeks, we may or may not see another clutch of eggs. But uh, either way, at this stage, Sheila is looking a little bit lean, but we've been feeding her extra lately now that she's a mother, right? Going into motherhood. Her usual feeding schedule since she reached adulthood has been about once every two days or so, maybe once every three days. But lately, she's been getting food just about every night. Maybe we skip every third day or so, you know. But she'll eat about five nights a week and uh, she's been loving it she's been loving that she hunts food great all by herself we do have this feeding dish in there just to make things easier on her while she's going through this but uh she's been doing great and leroy's biting my foot but i do think that this is a very underrated gecko number one it's the gift that keeps on giving right you're gonna get some more geckos out of the deal with proper husbandry and care and things like that speaking of husbandry the upkeep is very simple i mean they do need a warm basking spot it's an australian species i don't know what to tell you if you were looking to not heat your australian reptile but being as tiny as they are and this is about as big as sheila will get they're very easy to house i mean she's in a 10 gallon here by herself I'll probably move the the four of them into this 10 gallon. You could even keep them in a five. A five might be a little tight, but if you really deck out the inside of the enclosure where they would have a bunch of places to go, I don't, I don't see why it would be a problem. Easy diet too. You don't need a whole lot of bugs because she's not a whole lot of gecko. So in my opinion, this is a gecko that should gain more traction. I mean, it's very similar to the morning gecko and the fact that they're parthenogenic, small little geckos. I know that morning geckos have toe pads so they can climb all different things, but if you just give her some climbing surface, I mean, look, she's pretty much stuck to my arm right here, right? So you give them a bunch of climbing surfaces, you'll still get to see them climb around. And I think they're a lot more beautiful. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel and like this video so that you guys will see in about two months when this little girl's eggs start hatching. Leave a comment down below too if you think I'm wrong in saying that this gecko is underrated or if you have any questions about the care for the species or things like that. I think that just about covers it for today. I think it's going to be a bit of a short one, but that's all right. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. I'm Raph. This is Sheila. That's Leroy. You're watching Red Ribbon Reptiles. We'll see you next time.